Molyneux Stadium is formed of four stands, each named after a club legend. Three of the stands are the Billy Wright, Stan Cullis and Sir Jack Hayward stands. The fourth is the only one of these legends who is still among us. Steve Ball played for Wolves from 1986 to 1999 and blossomed in the Black Country Gold, netting over 300 goals to the club as he became their all-time top scorer, and he well and truly earned his stand and status as a Wolves legend. This is the story of Steve Ball, Mr. Wolves. Steve Ball was born in Tipton, Staffordshire on the 28th of March 1965. It was clear as a youngster that he was a special talent, and after playing for a number of junior teams, he began his senior career with Tipton Town, dividing his time between playing for them and working various factory jobs. He would score goals for fun for his local side, and his manager, Sid Day, was also employed as a scout by West Bromwich Albion. Day recommended Ball to his employers, and the young striker's professional career would soon begin. He would make his senior debut for the Baggies in 1985, but struggled to break into the first team. He made a solitary top flight appearance to the club, which would be the only one of his career, and he would soon be sold, with manager Ron Saunders telling him he didn't have a good enough first touch for that level. Steve Ball made a short journey to Wolverhampton to join Wolves in 1986 for a fee of £64,000 but he would ultimately prove to be priceless. Wolves at the time were a club in disarray, with the days of Stan Cullis a distant memory. Wolves had fallen all the way down to the fourth tier, and were a shadow of their former selves. Their manager, Graham Turner, must have had little idea how much his new acquisition would completely turn the club's fortunes around. Bull made his debut in November, and opened his goal-scoring tally with a strike against Cardiff City in the Football League Trophy. His first season was a sign of the positive times ahead, as 19 goals from Ball helped Wolves finish fourth, although they would be defeated in the playoffs by Aldershot. The next season, however, Ball would be out of this world. Steve Ball netted an astonishing 52 goals in all competitions, with 34 strikes in the league and 4 hat-tricks overall. As a result, Wolves raced to the fourth division title, becoming the first team to be champions of all four divisions of the Football League. Wolves made it a double when they defeated Burnley 2-0 in the Football League Trophy final at Wembley. Ball had achieved so much at 24, and there was plenty more to come. The heights of the third division did not dissuade Ball's goal-scoring exploits, as he would reach half a century again. 37 league goals and 50 in all competitions meant Wolves achieved a consecutive Football League title and were now in the second division. Only two years after joining, Ball had completely changed the fortunes of the club with his goal-scoring prowess, and thanks to him, the Molyneux faithful could dare to dream again. Despite playing outside the top flight, Ball's exploits were not going unnoticed, and Bobby Robson called Ball up to the England national team. To some, it may have seemed bizarre, but it was soon justified, as Ball netted on his international debut against Scotland. After netting 24 goals in the second division, and also getting a brace in the tie against Czechoslovakia, Ball would form part of the England squad at Italia 90. He would play four times in the tournament, and whilst not netting, it was remarkable a second division player could play a part in such a big tournament, as England reached the semi-finals. However, he was overlooked by Bobby Robson's successor Graham Taylor, and did not play for England again after October 1990. The goals continued to flow for Bull, as Wolves looked to gain a spot in the top flight. In the 91-92 campaign, he netted his 195th goal for Wolves, making him the club's all-time top scorer, a record he has held ever since. He was deified by the Wolves faithful, who loved how he scored so often, so naturally, despite having limited athletic abilities and his love for a pint after the game. Ball was linked with moves to the likes of Coventry, Leeds, Celtic and Torino, but he remained loyal to the black and gold. The 92-93 campaign was the first time he didn't hit at least 20 goals for five seasons, but even then, he still struck 19 times. He kept hitting further milestones, reaching 200 and then 250 goals for Bulls, and hopes to reach his dream of playing for the club in the Premier League. But sadly, he would lose in the playoffs in both 1995 and 1997. Even as age caught up with him, he was still amongst the goals, but soon had several issues with knee injuries that saw his playtime limited. 
these would not stop him reaching 300 goals for Wolves, but eventually, in 1999, Steve Bull had to call it a day due to the injuries. He left Molyneux as a god of Wolverhampton, netting a grand tally of 306 goals in 561 games over a 13-year period, a tally that is unlikely to ever be beaten. In 2003, a stand at Molyneux was renamed the Steve Ball Stand, honouring the man who netted time and time again for them. He remains adored by the Wolverhampton faithful to this day. Steve Ball may never have played in the Premier League for Wolves, but without him, they may not be a Premier League side today. He came to the club when they were rock bottom and felt they may never see the top flight again, and netted seemingly endlessly for them as he helped bring them back from their ruins, winning two league titles and a cup along the way. Without Steve Ball, Wolves may well still be languishing in the fourth tier, or even worse, and that is why the Tipton skin as he is known is the Messiah of Molyneux. Thank you.